Hey peeps, welcome back. It's Aldo from Zero to Mastery, and in today's tutorial, we're focusing on ETL with Power BI. This tutorial is part of Travis Kuzik's comprehensive Power BI Bootcamp course available on Zero to Mastery. So if you're ready to become a data expert and master this powerful tool, click the link in the top right hand corner or check out the description below for access to the full course. All right, that's it for me. Let me hand it over to Travis. Enjoy. Let's jump right into Power BI's ETL tools, which are the foundation of the overall Power BI workflow. But before we get ahead of ourselves, what the heck does ETL even mean, especially in the context of Power BI? So ETL is a super common acronym in the business intelligence world, which stands for Extract, Transform, and Load. And this is exactly what we can do with a variety of external data sources in Power BI. First up, the extract phase of the ETL process entails Power BI extracting data from a wide range of sources. Text files, comma-separated value files, databases of many kinds, spreadsheets, and so on, just to name a few. But extracting external data is just the beginning. Next, we can use Power BI's built-in Query Editor, also known as Power Query, to apply all sorts of transformations to that data. The point here is to take the kind of messy, raw data that commonly exists in the real world and transform it, prettyfy it, so to speak, so that it meets our particular needs. Then finally, we can load that transformed data from Power Query into Power BI. It's not hard to see why these steps are super important in the grand scheme of things. While analyzing and visualizing data may be our end goal, and for many folks, the fun part of being a data analyst, the reality is that you first have to actually get a hold of that data, and very often transform it, so it can be used for all those sophisticated charts and analytics you're going to impress your boss with. So now that we have the thousand foot view of the ETL process in Power BI, let's put acronyms and definitions and other boring stuff behind us for now and dive into the nuts and bolts of how this all actually works on a live data set. So as we now know, extracting data is the first step in the ETL process. So that's what we'll tackle first. Now, as our example in this video and the first part of the course, we'll use a CSV or comma separated value file that contains data on Bigfoot sightings in the United States. And yes, by the way, this is a real data set, whether or not you believe, you know, Bigfoot is real. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the comma separated values format, it's a very, very common format in which raw data is stored in the real world. So to extract this Bigfoot data into Power BI, We'll first click this Get Data button on the Home tab of the ribbon, which will display a list of the various sources we can fetch data from. And as you can see, it's a pretty long list, featuring Excel spreadsheets, text and CSV files, SQL Server databases, and more. And if we click the More option at the bottom of the dialog box, we see an even longer list of sources. So long, in fact, that there's even a Google-like search field that lets us enter a search term to narrow the list down a bit. So if we were looking for databases, for example, I could just type database here. And now we see just a list of databases that Power BI can fetch data from. But again, for our first example, we're going to keep things straightforward and just fetch our data from a CSV file. So let's get rid of our search term. and then select the text CSV option from the list and hit connect at the bottom of the dialog box. Now Power BI brings up a file explorer dialog box. And all I have to do at this point is just navigate through my file system until I find the file that I'm trying to import. Now, luckily enough for us, we're already in the right folder. So I'll just click that file to select it. But before I click open, I first want to call out here that certain operations in Power BI, especially those that involve fetching or loading datasets like this one, 
can take a while. Depending on your system, maybe 5 seconds, maybe 10, or even more. We're going to encounter several such scenarios throughout the course, and to spare us both from the awkwardness of staring at a static screen for that length of time, I'm generally going to fast forward through them. So don't be thrown off when things occasionally take longer on your computer than what you see on my screen. So with that little disclaimer out of the way, I'll go ahead and click open. Now after waiting a bit for the data to load, we see that Power BI gives us a preview of the data that we'll be fetching from that CSV file. Now it's not showing us the entire file or all the data. It's just going to show us all the columns and then a sample of the first few rows of the data. And as you can probably glean just from this little preview, our Bigfoot dataset basically consists of one row of data per Bigfoot sighting with each column containing a different class of details about that sighting. From this first column, which has freeform notes about each sighting, to other columns with harder data points, like the date, location, and weather conditions as of when the sightings were reported. That may seem like a lot of data, but finding Bigfoot is serious business after all. But before I get pulled down a rabbit hole here, or a Bigfoot hole I guess, Let's get back to the task at hand, which is actually fetching this data into Power BI. Now of particular importance when you're importing a text file is your choice of the delimiter, which is how the columns of data in text files are separated from one another. So since we're dealing with a CSV, or comma separated values file, Power BI correctly guesses that we want to use a comma as our delimiter. But of course, we have the option to choose a variety of other delimiters as well, which we can see if we just click this little drop down here. But again, since we're dealing with a CSV file, we're going to stick with comma. Now overall, our data looks good. Pretty much like I would expect, to the extent that I have expectations for a data set about Bigfoot sightings. So now to load this data set into Power BI, all we need to do, unsurprisingly, is click this load button at the bottom of our dialog box here. But hold up. Before we do that, let's briefly take note of the Transform Data button right next to it. This is the button we click if we're not satisfied with every single aspect of this data as is and want to apply some transformations to it before we pull it into Power BI. We'll get into that much more just a little bit later. But for now, I'll go ahead and click Load. Then, after waiting for the data to load, or more likely a handful of moments, the dialog box disappears and Power BI returns us to the report view. But it's not exactly obvious where our data went. But if we look over to the right under Fields, it looks like we found our data set. Or rather, I should say, we found our query, which is how we conventionally refer to external data sets that we fetch in to Power BI. Note that by default, Power BI based the name of this query on the name of the file we imported, although this is certainly something we can customize and change, as we'll see down the road. And if we click this little arrow just to the left of the name of the query, we see a list of all the fields from the CSV file. And to get a much more comprehensive preview, we can switch from the report view in our Power BI file to the data view. And in this view, we can explore the contents of the file in much the same way as you could in a spreadsheet like Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets. Now at this point, with our data set successfully loaded, I'll go ahead and save our file by hitting File and Save As. And then I'll name our file Bigfoot Sightings. And finally click Save. And it looks like it saved successfully. And there you have it, folks. A big thank you to Travis for guiding us through this lesson. Want to dive even deeper? Well, lucky for you, there's a whole lot more to learn in Travis's complete Power BI Bootcamp course, linked in the top right-hand corner and in the description down below. 
Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on future tutorials from Travis and other expert Zero to Mastery instructors. All right, that's it from me. Keep learning, stay dedicated, and I'll see you in the next one.